This is the Book Legion Podcast, where we review thought-provoking books to give our Legionnaires the knowledge they need to dominate the next level of their life. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me on the Book Legion this week. This is your host, Tizer Evans. This week, I'm going to be reviewing a classic sales book, The Little Red Book of Selling by Jeffrey Gittemere. So Jeffrey Gittemere has been in the speaker sales space for several, several decades. Um, this is probably the book I feel like to put him on the map, although he's been doing this work for a long time. I think this book was written in about 2005. And again, this is The Little Red Book of Selling, 12.25 Principles of Sales Greatness. So it's one of those books that most salespeople have read, but if you're new to the sales space and you're looking at a great introductory book to sales about how to just get the basics down, the foundation of sales, this is an excellent book that is absolutely timeless. So I'm going to cover my three favorite takeaways um, from the book, which is incredibly uh, well-written and very funny. Uh, So we'll jump into that. So the first chapter I want to talk to you guys about that I really enjoyed was principle two out of the 12.5 principles. Prepare to win or lose to someone who is. And this chapter goes into being prepared, you know, the old Boy Scout model, uh, find best ways of information about a prospect, do your homework, are you a winner or a whiner, and so on and so forth. And so one of the things that a lot of salespeople really don't do on a daily basis is they don't prepare to win. And so I love this chapter because it's all about you have to take accountability to be a winner in sales. And one of the best ways that you do that is being prepared to win. One of the things I always encourage reps to do that I was given this advice early on in my sales career that was instrumental in helping me was I would either stay late and set up my prospecting list for the next day, or I would come in early and do my prospecting list for the next day. I still do that, I still do that to this day. <clears throat> I happen to do it at night now. So that way, now that I have kids and things like that, if I get behind or if I'm running home late from the gym, it's already done. I can go right into my day. I don't have to guess about what I'm going to be doing. Now, the second thing he talks about is that you want to be a professional, right? If you're in sales, you want to do your homework. So especially if you're in B2B sales, you don't want to spend an over exorbitant amount of time doing research and finding out everything about the company, but you want to have a general idea of when they're founded, who their CEO is, who their really C-suite executives are, you know, what their mission is, and where you may be able to help them with blind spots or have a really uh, compelling reason why they should take time to talk to you. And it's kind of hard to be able to provide a compelling reason to talk to you if you don't know much about the business. And then, you know, lastly in sales, you face a, a lot of rejection, right? So are you a winner or a whiner? What type of attitude do you take um, when you faced rejection? Are you someone that shuts down? Or you say, hey, that no is one more closer to the next yes. So it goes into a lot of the mindset. And the first chapter has really spent a lot of that too, of like, what does it take? And he talks a lot about self-accountability when it comes to sales. Uh, so chapter two, that was a fun one because I think not enough salespeople prepare themselves to win. It's more of a, I'm going to be reactionary to my sales day. I'm just going to just, you know, see what's in my CRM, call those leads. There's not a rhyme or a reason for the way they attack the day. And that should be really set up before the day ever starts. So principle number five is the one I want to talk about, especially in today's world. And it's it's not work, it's network is principle number five. And you know, it's interesting, there's a statistic that I always tell salespeople, and that's that 10% of salespeople actually ask for a referral, but 90% of customers say that they would give one, right? So it just tells you there's a huge missed opportunity. And so what this chapter really drives home is first and foremost, how to get out there and network. I mean, it's really a short chapter. It's get face to face first, which is way more impactful, right? Than over the phone, <clears throat> or definitely way more impactful than email. Uh, networking eliminates cold calling and network leads to referrals. And so there's lots of things you can do. You can look at joining a young professionals association. You can look at joining a Rotary's club or a Lions club. Um, there's all kinds of like executive networking mastermind groups. I get asked probably every other week to join one. So there's lots of different ways you can uh, join your local chamber of commerce to get plugged in. And the more you get plugged in, especially if you have a brick and mortar or working local, then the easier it is once you start to get your first two or three client clients through networking than to ask those clients for referrals, right? Hey, would you mind giving me three names of people that I could help serve just like I did you? And if you did a great job when you delivered on what you said you're going to, or even you under-promised and over-delivered, which is always best case scenario, then you're more than likely gonna get those referrals. And so uh, the, the other thing that I think that we gotta think about in the COVID world, that, that salespeople have done a pretty good job of navigating though, is that if you're heavy on phones and heavy on emails, 
still take the time to try to set up a Zoom call with your prospects. You know, and it's something that I really try to do when we start to get some type of traction. You know, a lot of offices are still closed. A lot of people just don't have comfortability with going out and meeting people in person, which is definitely understandable. Been in a pandemic for two years. So one of the best things to do is to offer a Zoom call. You know, if, if your company doesn't pay for Zoom, it's $15 for their base plan, uh, which is more than worth it. And then you can drop them a link and have a 30 minute introductory call and you still get to have that face to face. For me, it's I think it's really important getting me really hits this point home in the book is that when you can associate a face and a name, it makes it much actually, in my opinion, harder to say no, which is never the goal to make it harder to say no, but they start to let their guard down and say that they're just talking to another human being. And that's always where the place I want to get to is that I'm never about selling you something. Um, it's always about, I want to be able to make a strong recommendation on my product, good or service that I think that will help to benefit or ease some type of pain in your life. And the best way for me to get to be able to do that is by you trusting me. And the best way for you to be able to trust me is to be able to see my facial expressions, see that I'm sincere in the words that are coming out of my mouth. And then once you've been able to get to serve, uh, through networking or however you got to that lead source, always asking for the referrals. Uh, so, you know, networking, referrals, and face-to-face -face are always best case scenario. So I was happy that he uh, covered this in chapter five. So chapter nine uh, is the last chapter I want to talk about and something that I can really appreciate. And it's use creativity to differentiate and dominate. And when it comes to sales, I mean, one of the things you can be uh, advantageous about is really how do you imprint who you are in the prospect's mind. And there's great things I've seen in my industry. Like I, I know of a guy who will send a $250, um, really nice expensive like steak knife to a, a prospect and he, and he will, you know, leave it just like a handwritten note that says like, I'd like to carve out a little bit of time. Right. And that's it. Like nice gift, funny message. And he said 80% of the time, if that person calls him, um, a callback and he's able to get in front of that person, it's a closed deal um, from that one little thing of creativity. So I've seen Cardone who he, he talks about, he'll send someone a chocolate boot and say he's hoping to get his foot in the door. Right? So just little clever things like that. Now, if you don't have money, time or resources to do that, there's great little things to be differentiate. You have a great conversation from a prospect. There's companies out there where you can get online and then the name's escaping me, but I've used it before where you can learn online and it's a card service where you can get on there and it does a handwritten card for you and sends it to the person. So if you don't have stationary supplies, you don't have time to send the card, you get on, you write your message and that company will handwrite your card and the message goes out the door. So I think it's really impactful to, uh, from after first meeting someone to always thank them for their time by way of text or by way uh, of the, those cards I was talking about. Always if you solidify a deal, that absolutely always needs to be a, a thank you card or maybe even a gift if it's appropriate. Um, but when you're really prospecting, think of creative ways to get in the door. One of my favorite things to do that I don't think people do enough is two things. I like to send podcasts. Um, so if it's a relevant topic, um, I mostly work with insurance. And so I'll send them a podcast on a relevant topic that I know that's kind of trending. It's kind of a buzzword, but uh, not a lot of people know about. So it's a way for them to listen, for me to help educate them, and then for us to have a discussion about that. So it's a great reason for me to follow up. Hey, you know, Tom was just wondering if you had listened to that podcast. Yeah, Ty, I really did. Well, I'd love to hear your thoughts, right? And then we start on um, course of a dialogue. And then the second thing I think is really powerful to do that – you know, people are starting to do it more and more, but it's still few and far between. So if you're one of the people that jumps on this, I think you'll have a great amount of response, is using video to send messages. So you have a really tough to reach prospect and you make a little sign that just says, hi, Ty, or hi, Steve, or whatever it is, right? And they get that popped up and they see that embedded in a little video. If I saw someone that said, and I've seen this, that says, hi, Ty, or hi, Tizer, well, I'm gonna watch the video, right? Because I'm intrigued at what it is. And then there's your chance to get 30 uh, to 60 seconds, I would say, to just drop your value pitch. Hey, Steve, you don't know me. Thanks so much for taking some time to listen to this video. Uh, you're, I noticed you're in the same industry with other clients of mine. Some of my clients have been facing probably similar problems. You have been with XYZ. By applying certain types of financial strategies uh, through risk management strategies, we have almost have clients just like yourself in the exact same space, size company, 20% on XYZ within their business. I would love to get uh, five minutes of your time to see if this is something that would make sense for you, right? Something in the video like that, that, that you took the time to do it, you had a compelling reason why you should talk, you established a journey working with people in the same industry, so you have some credibility there. And then you're not asking, you're having a reasonable ask, only asking for five minutes of their time. 
a lot of people are very receptive to that. I think that the engagement rate goes, it's up like 58% uh, versus a standard email. It might even be more. I think it's 300%. I apologize. I did the research on it because it was so compelling. And I, I offered uh, an application, Vidyard is one, uh, to my team that I'd managed last year and a lot of them jumped on it and had a lot of success. So it was a lot of fun. Um, it's actually a free application with inside of LinkedIn. So if you didn't know that when you, you LinkedIn, you can leave a voice message or a video message. So I, I encourage you if you're every day using LinkedIn, try that method. Uh, but if you guys want to go check out this book, it's a great book. Uh, Jeffrey Gittimer, again, he's a sales consultant. He's got his own podcast. That he does with his wife Jennifer, which is really fun to listen to. They have a great dynamic. You know, they're a bunch of East Coasters, um, so I always appreciate their just directness when it comes to sales and uh, getting after it. So you, I'll post a link to the book and, and the bio in the show notes. I think the book is actually only like five bucks on Amazon, so I would definitely get it. It's a nice uh, book. That's got plenty of color for those of you that are looking at this on YouTube. Uh, I was listening. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful little book. Um, I definitely highly recommend if you're someone who's starting sales or if you're maybe struggling and you want to go back and revisit some of the basics, great place to start. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so to the podcast. And if you could share with three or four book lovers, it's the only way that the channel continues to grow. I said the explosion of growth, especially in the last 60 days has been really incredible. So I appreciate everybody's uh, support. So if you could please just share with three or four people that love to read books on personal development, um, and in which facet, you know, we cover the core pillars of your life, sales, leadership, spirituality, health and wellness, investment, money stuff, mindset, uh, so anyway, appreciate you guys' report, uh, your support, and I'll talk to you all soon.